Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Today, I'm thrilled to have a very special guest on the podcast, Jonathan Beskin, author of The Least Likely Millionaire, How to Succeed When Everyone Expects You to Fail, is here to share his story. His journey is a powerful testament to resilience and overcoming adversity, including his battles with mental illness and his remarkable transformation into a successful entrepreneur. His story is not just about financial success. It's a deeper narrative of facing life's challenges head on and emerging triumphant. Whether it's his unique insights into mental health, the roller coaster of entrepreneurship, or his ventures like singleswag.com and paradisedelivered.com, Jonathan's experiences offer invaluable lessons and inspiration. Plus, Jonathan is offering you 35% off anything on his websites. Head over to singleswag.com and paradisedelivered.com and use the code HUGS. That's the code HUGS, H-U-G-S, at checkout to get your discount. And you can connect with Jonathan over on Instagram, TikTok, or his website, which is jonathanbeskin.com. All right, sit back, tune in, and let's dive into this captivating conversation with Jonathan Beskin. I have an awesome opportunity for you for my friends over at Therapy Notes. Are you feeling overwhelmed by a sea of paperwork and a labyrinth of appointments? Let Therapy Notes be your peaceful haven. Known as the leader in electronic health records, Therapy Notes shines brightly in the dynamic field of mental health care. Their round-the-clock live phone support, earning a stellar 4.9 star rating on Trustpilot.com and Google, mirrors their dedication. And Therapy Notes brings you a comprehensive range of services, streamlined billing, effective scheduling, precise note-taking, and innovative telehealth options. Exciting news for prescribers, the introduction of ePrescribe is set to transform your practice. And if you're thinking of transitioning from another EHR, Therapy Notes ensures a smooth switch, offering complimentary import of your demographic data, setting you up for a smooth journey from the start. So join over 100,000 mental health professionals who have already embarked on their journey with Therapy Notes. Begin with a two-month complimentary trial, no obligations. Just click the link in the show notes or navigate directly to checkout and use promo code LISA at therapynotes.com. Dive into the Therapy Notes adventure and see why it stands out as a leading light in the industry. With Therapy Notes, you're not just selecting an EHR, you're navigating towards success. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard, and this week's guest is Jonathan Beskin. Welcome to the podcast, Jonathan. It's awesome to have you. Thanks, Lisa. Happy yeah. to be here. Excited. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm excited too. And I love, uh, I just got to share, I you wrote a book called The Least Likely Millionaire, How to Succeed When Everyone Expects You to Fail. And I highly recommend it to anyone out there who's ever had a struggle in their life because um, you've definitely had some struggles in your life and you've overcome and here you are. And how did you become the least likely millionaire? Can you share with our listeners how that happened? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I definitely, uh, I grew up, uh, without a lot of, uh, resources. I kind of grew up with a single mom. Um, I faced a lot of, uh, adversity in my life. I talk about some specific instances in the book, um, I was uh, hospitalized uh, for severe mental illness, uh, both as an adolescent and an adult. Um, I've been on kind of a a roller coaster of um, cocktails of uh, psychotropic uh, medications and uh, been off and on a, a number of them. And um, you know, suicidal ideation, um, you know, ruminations, uh, very irrational thoughts, paranoia, but, uh, yeah. So I think, you know, part of my story is definitely mental illness, but there was some specific trauma, uh, that also happened in my childhood and some, some incidents, that type of thing. So in spite of all that, and I think as a result of that, honestly, um, I, I started a company in 2016, uh, that became a top 200 company in the Inc 5,000. 
and a, um, uh, a kind of well-known brand in some ways. And then I bought another company in 2020. Uh, my first company was called Single Swag, and it's a, a subscription box uh, company, so a recurring revenue model uh, uh, business. And we send uh, full-size women's lifestyle products to our subscribers, so uh, cosmetics, jewelry, fashion accessories, books, food. And um, then I bought this company called Paradise Delivered, and uh, yeah, had had a, a life changing success, um, you know, personally and financially through those businesses. Um, and uh, uh, that that's kind of what and I, what I talk about in the book is kind of my uh, personal story, everything. And I'm very transparent about things that have happened in my life, including you know, the stays in the mental hospital, uh, electroconvulsive uh, therapy uh, while I was there. And, um, uh, you know, the book also has some actionable advice and tips for people that do want to start a business or people that want to change their life in meaningful ways. And I'm hoping to, uh, you know, help as many people as I can. Nice. Yeah. I, you know, I have a lot of questions. I <laughs> so many questions and I feel like we could take this conversation in so many different directions. So I guess I I would like to like to ask you a little bit about the stuff, the mental health issues that you dealt with when you were younger. When you look back on them now, what made the most difference for you in in getting well again or getting back to a place of health? Yeah, I, I think ultimately uh, for, for most of my life, um, if, if you kind of look at, I've done this exercise where you look at your your life and there's kind of a, a baseline in the middle of the sheet of paper and you kind of chart out your life like a stock ticker and, you know, all the ups and downs. And really for, for a lot of it, it was down. And um, a lot of my childhood was down, my teenage years, high school, all this was down. I, I think really, you know, fortunately I'm on an upward uh, trajectory. And um, uh, I think uh, this concept I talk about in the book of a healthy obsession is something that that, that really uh, helped me turn around. And, uh, you know, being able to, you know, realize that I'm not going to get rid of a lot of the symptoms of mental illness, uh, that it's kind of genetic, it's part of who I am. So things like uh, severe anxiety, um, uh, you know, tree branching thoughts, uh, paranoia, uh, uh, you know, ruminations. I mean, I I know that 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 I'm going to have that. So how can I channel that and harness that energy and harness those thoughts into something positive? Uh, so first, uh, I became a serious marathon runner, and I was incredibly disciplined, and I was um, incredibly disciplined about uh, the way I ate and the way I took care of my body and my uh, training regimen. And I had finally something to focus on, something healthy to focus on, to keep my brain occupied and to focus on this. Then, uh, you know, I started the business and I became obsessed with the business and looking at it from every angle and preempting what my competitors were doing and just really making that, you know, kind of my, my, my being and being overwhelmed by it, allowing myself to be overwhelmed by it. I actually ended up gaining some weight because I, I wasn't able to focus on two things at once. Okay. I wasn't able to keep up the, you know, obsessive exercise and, and eating right while I was uh, building this company in some way. So it's interesting, but I, uh, yeah, I, I, I really attribute a lot of the, and, 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 and in no way am I totally cured in no way do I still not, um, you know, have these symptoms of mental illness. Um, I still, you know, have traumatic things in my life that happen. I still, um, have, uh, you know, an elevated baseline level of anxiety. Um, I still take some psychotropic medication, although it's much smaller dose, um, than, than I have in the past. Uh, but I, I think the reason why I'm healthier now and, and better now in some ways is because of these healthy obsessions that I've been able to build for myself. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, um, the healthy obsessions, I can, I can understand that it's, it's good to have something to focus on that is, a you know, pushing you and striving and pushing you to strive forward in, in your life. Do you, and I'm just curious, like, do you go, do you have a therapist, like a, a counselor? Uh, I, I, I don't currently. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, my mother, um, who I'm very close with works in my business is always, uh, whenever I, 
because uh, that that's really the one person that I'm uh, truly vulnerable with at this point. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not like uh, dating anyone seriously and I don't like have uh, uh, like, you know, anyone to lash out at or, or talk to. And she's always encouraging me to and telling me I need to. Um, there have been different points uh, in my life relatively recently where I have seen a therapist for, for a brief period of time. Uh, but not um, consistently since around the time that I was last uh, hospitalized, which was over 10 years ago, um, you know, 10, 12 years ago. But, you know, it, it, it's funny because I talk so much about mental health, but um, it's interesting. I haven't been asked that question, and it's not really something that I have prioritized. Uh, I will say, though, um, uh, when I have done it, recently it has really helped me and there was a particular um incident you know within the last year uh, earlier in 2023 uh, involving my son uh that um i did see a therapist and i was in a a, a darker place and i've been in the last couple of years and it did help me quite a bit oh good okay yeah, yeah. don't worry i'm not trying to like <laughs> Become no, that. I mean, I'm just it's curious. like, I, yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm talking to a therapist. I, I guess I got a little defensive there, but like, no, I, it's uh, okay. because I, I definitely, um, yeah, I, 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 um, you know, maybe I'm like talking myself into all the reasons I yeah. should be. No, no, I don't want you to feel that way at all. I was just really curious if you, you know, if you had, if you had one and, um, you mean maybe some of the things that your therapist had recommended or was like, you know, sharing with you, I'm not by any means trying to make you feel bad or shame you into not having one. And it sounds like you have the people in your life that you need, you get the support from. And that's truly what is the most important thing. You know, I really, I believe that in my heart, like you don't, you don't have to have a therapist all the time. It's not something that, I mean, honestly, we therapists hope that we work ourselves out of a job with clients. You know, we don't want at least speaking for myself, like, I don't want somebody to be with me forever and ever and ever. I think that, you know, finding the support and the people that you can be vulnerable with is, is so much more the long game. If you ask me that you can bounce ideas off of and, and feel yeah. safe and secure with. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so go ahead, tell us more about your company. And I, so my, my next question actually is kind of funny. I was like, you were talking about the singles swag stuff and I was like, but you're a dude. <laughs> so how do you, yeah. how do you find the items for the single women? Like that, that's interesting to me. Like, are you the one that's like finding them or? Yeah, it's um, it, it, one of the, you know, a, a lot of also what kind of created, I think, the least likely millionaire going back to the first question is that uh, so many people overtly told me that this idea was never going to work. And other people had had this idea for kind of a single women subscription box. And, uh, you know, it's really a large market. So people uh, don't always recognize that single or unmarried adults make up more than half of the uh, U.S. population, make up half of the, the world population. Uh, more women in particular make more of a conscious choice to stay single longer. More people are divorced, obviously. So it's really a, what they call a, a TAM, like a you know total available market. It's, it's a huge market. And people don't necessarily uh, uh, focus on it. But so many people told me, um, you know, what the hell do you know, not only about uh, single women or, you know, these products, but about business and about um, even things like raising money or having a startup or digital advertising or all these things. And I was even told by other people in the subscription box space uh, people in my life uh, you know, just everyone like, you know, who are you? What do you know? You know, stick to your day job. You know, uh, it's a joke, whatever. Uh, but um, uh, the answer to your question fundamentally is I, I really don't know that much, but uh, I really have been able to talk my, teach myself a lot. Um, so uh, what I did at the very beginning of the company, now I've actually learned a lot and established some pretty strong foundational knowledge. And I have a team now of uh, uh, that includes some women that that try products and, and help me make these decisions. But at the beginning, I uh, literally Googled what single women would want or single women gifts. 
Yeah. And um, uh, different lists came up on a number of uh, online publications, and I was able to put together some initial list of what could be attractive in kind of a, a first uh, series of boxes. So, you know, and and I've also gotten accused of being, um, you know, somewhat disingenuous for, you know, having this company for, for, for single women. But I think uh, also a lot of our subscribers have been very happy over the course of that company that some that there's something focused on them uh, because there's also sometimes in my opinion a societal stigma uh, just like there is with mental illness in some ways but with being single and not being as happy as your married counterparts and we have you know a lot of long-term uh, single single moms uh, that subscribe to single swag. And when I had the idea, I originally wanted to focus on both men and women. Uh, but when I did some initial market research, which I think is important when you're starting any business, uh, to kind of find out what what's happening in that area, uh, women were really the consumers at that time, and really still now for these boxes. And also, uh, this is 2016, uh, it was very important for e-commerce brands to uh, cultivate a community on Instagram. And that was really what I did with this company, even like pre-revenue, even before we were selling on our website, singleswag.com, we were, you know, cultivating community. I was myself posting 10 times a day on an Instagram account of content that, you know, would resonate with single women. I was going to hashtags like single, singles, single AF, uh, dating, relationships, all this stuff and liking photos to get uh, kind of traffic to that Instagram account to get if you liked a certain number of um, images, you would get a certain number of followers, uh, because those people would come to your Instagram account and, and kind of it, there was like a conversion rate, you know, situation happening there. So, um, you know, and, and just like it kind of goes along the lines of digital advertising. I mean, um, I had a background uh, prior to starting this business in banking and uh, financial services. And I, I was a branch manager. I talk about in the book how uh, a bank that I was managing got robbed. And um, while I was there, uh, you know, with the whole team and what I had to do in that situation and uh, had some other job, but nothing digital advertising, e-commerce startup. But I was able to scale our ad spend from $20 a day to over 10000 a day in a year. And uh, without a third party agency, uh, I didn't have the money to hire a third party agency. And I just learned. Um, I made sacrifice. I didn't watch TV. I didn't go out with friends. I was so obsessed with making this happen. And uh, eventually it did. Yeah. And I mean, that's how that's what it takes. You know, like you got to yeah. be a little obsessed when you start a business. I can relate to that. When I first started the podcast, I was a little bit obsessed with getting getting it all um, figured out and learning how to put it all together. And yeah, no, I, I can totally get that. So, okay. All right. Um, is there anything you definitely want to cover that I haven't covered yet? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, okay. I'm happy to uh, discuss uh, anything um, uh, you, you, you'd like. I'm, I'm uh, doing my best to, to share, uh, you know, everything I can from my story. Yeah. And uh, uh, I know it's, it's kind of, but yeah, I mean, Mental health is, is really the big thing. And I think it's it's okay. one of the big, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, individuals that have, um, you know, had a rags to riches story uh, yeah. that have created a company uh, from, from nothing. Um, what I don't think there's necessarily a lot of is a lot of transparency around mental illness. Right. And even if it's not as extreme as in my case, which included like suicidal ideation, um, uh, different, um, you know, levels, but even on a daily basis, uh, dealing with stress, uh, mm. dealing with anxiety, dealing, uh, with, uh, you know, trauma in your life and kind of overcoming that and how so many entrepreneurs in particular and people that have been, I mean, my business, um, although I, I kind of gave you the highlights of the, you know, two times on the Inc 5,000 and the fast growth and the, uh, you know, millions of dollars I was able to put in my pocket, but it, it, it's not all uh, glorious like that. I mean, there's been a lot of times and in the kind of roller coaster ride of my business, um, you know, my life is in an upward trajectory, but the business is not doing as well at the moment as it was in like uh, 2020. 
And that has to do with some variables that are outside my control, uh, primarily uh, the digital advertising environment, which has just changed uh, a lot. And I don't have to go into the weeds and into that, why that is I could, but I, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, I'll let you, uh, you know, decide that. But it, 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 it's like, I've, I've had to deal with, uh, you know, ad adversity. And I think yeah. that's common in entrepreneurship that it's a unique situation that you're always just on a high and you're always just right. uh, doing incredibly well and enjoying that success. Uh, there's a, a lot of adversity and a lot of tough, things that have to happen too, hiring employees, eliminating employees, you know, all right. kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, so what you, what you just said was your uh, personal life is on a up, but the business right now is kind of steady. Hasn't, hasn't grown as much as it has in the past. Is that what you mean? Is that what you said? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I mean the business, well, uh, I think uh, really every e-commerce business over the last, um, you know, since uh, 2020, when a lot of these, uh, businesses. I mean, my business did incredibly well, and I did incredibly well during COVID-19. Right. Um, it was a life-changing, kind of game-changing uh, success. Um, since then, and since like the rollout of the Apple iOS uh, 14, mm -hmm. like the, um, it just had an impact, a negative impact on digital advertising. And, and really, there's two uh, primary uh, variables that that are important uh, in my business. And one is what we're paying to acquire customers, so the acquisition costs sure. and the lifetime value. Uh, right. So how long we're keeping people subscribed to our service. And um, yeah, so the business, um, uh, you know, is down relative to uh, 2020. In 2020, we're shipping uh, over 50,000 boxes a month. Now we're shipping closer to 15,000 boxes a month. Um, this is not like a sad story. I'm still right. making money. You know, that's still a lot. Um, it's still a sustainable business. But, um, you know, the way this business works is there's kind of a, a hole in a boat and you kind of have a leaky ship at all times. And if you're not um, able to, you know, fill up that boat and keep that boat afloat, then you're going to lose more than you're uh, kind of gaining. And a lot of companies uh, similar to mine have actually gone out of business or completely pivoted their business model. Some of the biggest names uh, there to, you know, get involved in other things, because this is not unique to me or my okay. company. This is just, um, you know, a product of some, you know, digital advertising yeah. variables, uh, economic variables. We're not in the same economy we were back then. So uh, a number of things, but I only brought that up uh, because, you know, I, I think that it, it's, you know, I'm still dealing with, e even though that's happening and I'm not on the same high that I was, um, I'm still, uh, you know, able to do it and, and, and doing my best to stay mentally strong and, uh, you know, just uh, make uh, decisions because, you know, when these things happen uh, operationally in the business, we need to, to shift and you need to make different economic decisions, right. you need to make different logistical decisions. There's things that have to be done in real time as like an operator, an entrepreneur, you know, that sometimes aren't, aren't easy to figure out and stressful and uh, yeah, you deal with it. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate you saying all that. The, and I'm, and I'm, it's really nice to hear too, that, you know, you are able to, it, it's not, it's not bringing you down. It's not pulling you down into that dark place that where you were, you know, 10 years ago, you're able to deal and to cope with, like we say, life on life's terms. Like it's not always going to be what we want it to be. And there are things out of our control. And I think that's really cool that you're able to, to, um, you know, find that be at peace with as best you can. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. So what do you think? So other therapists out there that are listening, what would you say is important for them to know? I, you've shared a little bit about entre the entrepreneurial journey, but what do you think is important for them to know if they're working with other, with their entrepreneurs out there in terms of mental health? Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, you know, even though I feel like, uh, mental health from my own perspective and my own story and kind of harnessing healthy obsessions, I have developed some expertise in that, but I'm, uh, nowhere near a, uh, what I would call a, you know, mental health practitioner, but I would say that I definitely have, uh, you know, connected with a lot of entrepreneurs. I have a lot of entrepreneur friends. I'm a part of, 
uh, EO, uh, Entrepreneurs Organization, which is a kind of professional organization where you have to have a qualifying business. And um, I connect in a real vulnerable way with a with a small group of entrepreneurs uh, through that. And uh, I, I think we all have similar, similar struggles. And I think there's uh, a lot of ups and downs. Um, there's a lot of difficult uh, decisions that, that, that need to be made. A lot of times it's, it's lonely and um, it's uh, uh, you know, I think loneliness is, is kind of a big part of it. And a lot of uh, you know, it's kind of like sometimes you have the weight of the world on your shoulders. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't want it any other way. I can't imagine at this point in my life going to work uh, for someone else. Uh, but I also um, have worked harder and, um, you know, uh, you know, had more uh, challenges. But I but I think, yeah, I, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but most of the entrepreneurs I know are just kind of uh, uh, crazy. And, um, you know, I, I uh, you know, I don't even know how how crazy is defined, or that's a bad word to say in in a community of I, therapists. No, but um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I know quite a few, and and I really didn't know that many. Uh, fortunate, you know, I really didn't have a lot of mentorship when I was building my business. I didn't really have any serious entrepreneurs in my family. I didn't have like a friend network. Fortunately, as I built the business and through this EO network that I'm involved in, um, I've met a lot of entrepreneurs. I've become friends with a lot of entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, so, I, so I've just gotten exposure to that. But I, I, I would say some of the biggest things to focus on, in my opinion, um, it, it, it is loneliness. I mean, ju just that 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 whole weight on the shoulders. I mean, my business doesn't have that many employees. There, there's some, uh, you know, there's businesses that are more labor kind of intensive that, that, that have that. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I, if that was yeah. a well put together answer, but no, no, I think that was good. I think you've, you've touched on a lot of different things that, you know, we can be keeping an eye out for. And it's, um, I would imagine the loneliness would, would be play a part. The, um, the stress definitely, um, yeah, that's really helpful, I think. So so what made you decide to actually write the book? Like what what was it that spurred you to to do it? Yeah, well, uh, and when I first started writing the book, by the way, I didn't plan to, it wasn't like I planned to talk about mental illness. I wasn't like I planned to, the way it worked with me writing the book is I kind of worked with a professional company and someone came and interviewed me. And through the course of that interview, which ended up being kind of like a therapy session, um, I relived a lot of this stuff from my past, mm -hmm. uh, including a lot from my childhood. And uh, the book starts with me getting beat up uh, basically in front of my whole senior class in high school. And um, uh, but I think really uh, as my story got out there more and as I started to, uh, you know, cultivate even my own kind of community on Instagram and there was more there were articles written about me. And I think people were reaching out to me. Oh, and I um, I went viral on a TikTok. <laughs> and um, I kind of used um, some of the, I have some expertise, I think, like in social media and building content that's kind of native to these platforms. And uh, before I wrote the book, I had a few videos go viral on TikTok and they got like over a million views. And they were kind of a narrative um, of my business journey with like text overlay and, and music that was trending, that type of thing. And I heard from a lot of people that wanted advice and they wanted to, to do that. So I thought a book uh, could be a, an effective way uh, to do that. And at the same time, uh, my business wasn't doing as well as it once had. And I was looking for another opportunity, uh, honestly, strategically to generate uh, income. And I thought that the book could be kind of a catalyst to a career in speaking uh, to groups in uh, more consulting and getting my name out there and really building that personal brand um, as a, a thought leader in entrepreneurship, uh, potentially entrepreneurship related to mental health and how uh, companies, individuals uh, can do that. I've been doing that on a 
a relatively smaller scale. I do have some uh, individuals and companies that I work with now uh, on a consulting basis, like on an hourly basis to talk about uh, different challenges they're facing, uh, some aspiring entrepreneurs in the subscription box space. And um, I'm looking to do more of that type of thing as I have kind of an operational team uh, that can uh, run a lot of aspects of my business. Uh, I'm still at, you know, involved in some aspects of the business, but I do have time uh, to focus on, on things like this and doing podcasts and um, speaking and, and trying to get my name out there and trying to tell the story. I mean, I, I, I really am happy with the, the product of the book. It's like a, a Wall Street Journal bestseller, but I, I don't want to have the the best book that like no one's ever heard of or like no one's ever read. Uh, so that's kind of like my fear now and my paranoia now is like, how can I uh, avoid having that uh, happen? Right, right. I gotcha. Well, I'm hoping that this interview will go far and wide and people will oh grab your book and, and give it a read. Awesome. So what's, yeah. what's next for you or what, what do you, what kind of projects are you um, wanting to implement moving forward? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, s similar to what I described, I mean, I still have these, these businesses. Uh, so, so those, uh, you know, kind of our lifestyle businesses that fund mm -hmm. a lot of aspects of uh, my lifestyle. I um, am am looking to leverage the the book to, um, you know, I, I definitely want to sell books. Uh, so the book is available like every uh, online, uh, you know, platform where books are sold. Amazon, uh, the audio book came out recently on Audible and every, uh, you know, iTunes, that type of thing. But um, yeah, I, I, I want to get out there and I, I would love to have the opportunity uh, to speak more in front of uh, larger audiences and, um, you know, travel around a little bit and not necessarily do a book tour, but uh, be brought in um, in the right situations. I have a few of these things scheduled early next year. Uh, where, you know, I've been invited to speak in, in to some large organizations. One of them is a, a large uh, Jewish organization uh, that's kind of been uh, uh, having a convention in Florida for both kind of adults and teenagers, that type of thing. And uh, another is an entrepreneurial conference in uh, Sarasota, Florida. But I, I, I would say that's next. And I would also say that I need to continue on the path that I've been on. Uh, you know, for me personally, I, I can't allow myself to creep back into a place where I'm in such a dark place where I need to be hospitalized or something, you know, need need mm -hmm. to go wrong. So I think um, because that's happened to me, I'm kind of susceptible to that. Like the ECT treatments or these treatments like didn't, in my opinion, like fully cure me to a level where, where I'm, I, you know, it's not possible for me. I don't, I don't think uh, that, that I'm ever going to end up there, or that that's uh, likely at this point. I think the chances are very low, but uh, if I don't keep my mind occupied, it's not like I, I think that I can retire and not have something to focus on uh, really at any point in my life. Because I think when I have nothing for my brain to focus on, that's when I get depressed. That's when I get more anxious. Uh, I need to have something to focus on. Like for me, being overwhelmed is good. Like mm -hmm. being overwhelmed means that my mind is occupied, particularly if it's overwhelmed on things that are positive me, going to benefit me or my family, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, I am looking forward to see what you do in the future and all those that you're going to impact and help out. Are these open to the public, these uh, conferences that you're going to be speaking at or like anybody can come or? Uh, I, well, I think, uh, the, the, the one that's for adults and teens is, mm -hmm. um, like, a it, it's called BBYO, B'nai oh, B'rith Youth sure. Organization. That's um, cool. I, I don't think it's open to the public. And I think there's some sensitivity stuff, particularly with what's going on in the world with, with an organization, uh, like that. So I'm not sure. I know it's going to be a well-attended, uh, event. Um, and the other one is, um, I, for, I, I can't think of the name of it right now, but I think that one may be open to the public, 
but it's more of a um, a paid event where people sure. pay to come and learn yeah. uh, from different entrepreneurs and that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I was just curious, like if, any, if people were in the area and they wanted to learn more about entrepreneurship and starting a business, that would probably be a good one for them. Yeah, to, yeah. To go and to. If, um, you know, people, uh, my email address is Jonathan at singleswag.com. Uh, I like for people to connect with me on Instagram. It's at Jay Beskin. And if anyone has questions or wants to uh, connect, uh, I'm happy to uh, do that. Cool. Okay. Well, this has just been great. I'll put everything in the show notes and maybe um, I'll get the name of that conference and, and we'll put it in the show notes for everybody to, yeah. to check out. So thank you so much for being here. So connect with them on Instagram, send them an email, buy a single swag box for that single lady a friend in your life or mom or not, not your wife <laughs> or girlfriend. Or, or, or Paradise Deliver box. And mm. we market Paradise okay. Delivered it's nothing to do with it's a, a, a vacation inspired experience from the comfort of your home. That's smart. I like that. Maybe my therapist friends out there can, we could grasp onto that one. Like, that'd be well, nice. Lisa, I'm happy to uh, send you uh, on me a few boxes to, uh, to check out. So You're just so please, kind. please uh, send me your address and uh, I'd love nice. your feedback, but um, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to uh, send you a few. Awesome. Well, you guys keep an eye out. I might be sharing. I'll do an unboxing when I get it. Thanks so much, Jonathan, oh, sure. for being here. This has been awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It's important to stress that these episodes are not meant to take the place of any work you're doing with your therapist or doctor. In fact, please run these ideas by your counselor or doctor before you act on them to make sure you are ready for them or even a fit for the suggestions. I can't stress this enough that each person is unique and their situation is unique. So please talk to your doctor before starting anything new that we might be suggesting. And the therapy show with Lisa Mustard and the information provided by me is solely intended for informational and entertainment purposes and is not a substitute for advice, diagnosis, or treatment regarding medical or mental health conditions. Although I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, the views expressed on the site or any related content should not be taken for medical or psychiatric advice. Always consult with your physician before making any decisions related to your physical or mental health. The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard is edited and engineered by Chelsea Weaver. If you're looking to start a podcast or ready to take the editing off of your plate, be sure to visit ChelseaWeaverPodcasting.com. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank, Thank you. you.